Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it is Superman. Perhaps growing up you have heard of this comic figure, Superman, this superhero. He's one of my favorites. Perhaps you have some of your own. But one of the things that made him a superhero is that he always stood up for what was right, what was good. And even when you thought, you thought that he might get caught by the evil, Lex Luthor's plot may finally get him, boom, he somehow comes through it and saves the day for truth, justice, and the American way. Perhaps you had your own superhero that you remember growing up. Many little boys and little girls, as they grew up, had their superheroes, maybe Spider-Man or maybe Wonder Woman, whoever it might be. I think the reason we like these stories, though, is because we like to see the victory over right over wrong. We like to see that these superheroes stepped into life and that they were able to use their superhuman powers to defeat the forces of evil. Well, we know that these superheroes, of course, are fake. I don't think I'm surprising any of you in telling you that, that while we enjoy the stories, they, there's no one with those superhuman talents and superhuman strength. In fact, at times I think it, we're hard-pressed to find a hero, much less a superhero. However, we like to hear these stories for a reason. We like to see the triumph over good, of good over evil because I don't think we see it very regularly in the world today. I think that as we look out the windows and the doors of our lives, that we see a lot of evil triumph over good. That we see a lot of people who need a hero but do not have one. That we look around and we wait for someone to come and swoop in and save the day, but there's not really someone there. Just turn on your TV and you, if you don't believe me. Think about the news stories that have run this week. Perhaps if you're following the Middle East over in Egypt right now. They're on the verge of civil war. If you wouldn't already count it as civil war, they could use a hero to set things right. Perhaps you've heard a story of another person, family, young family killed by a drunk driving accident. They could use a hero to stop that senseless death. Maybe... You've seen that the economy, well, we're still waiting for it to bounce back. In some ways it has, but for many people it hasn't. That they still are at risk of losing their homes, their jobs, and their income. They could use a hero to step in and save the day. And really, we don't even have to just turn on our TVs to look for a, the need for a hero. We don't just have to turn on our TVs because we know when we look around our own lives, we're waiting for that heroic act of a doctor or a researcher who finally finds that medicine, that perfect treatment that will cure everything that's been ailing us. Perhaps, perhaps it's that idea that there will be someone who comes up with the perfect thing to say to fix the problems in our family lives to fix the issues that are between brothers and sisters, to stop the lawsuits between husbands and wives as they lead to divorce, to stop the separation of children and parents. Many of us in our own homes are searching for a hero. We're searching for someone to step in and fix all those things that are wrong. We're searching for someone who will make what's right, to make what's wrong, right. And then, well, then we look at our gospel for today. We have the Beatitudes, a familiar portion of scripture, something that we've looked at before, something that we're familiar with, Matthew 5. And we hear, rather than a fix, a solution to the problem, we hear the words of Jesus as he says, blessed are you. Blessed are you when you experience the torments, the afflictions of life. Blessed are you as you go through these various things. Wait just a moment. I don't know about you, but how blessed do you feel when you're going through these trials and tribulations of life? How blessed do you feel when you wait for those things to be fixed? Many of us don't feel very blessed. In fact, we'd almost say that 
what Jesus is saying here is counterintuitive or unreasonable in our minds. We, we, can't fi- we can't figure it out. And not just what Jesus says, but if we read a little further in the Bible and we look down to 1 Peter, Peter was writing this epistle to a number of people who were about to experience the suffering at the hands of Nero, his brothers and sisters in Christ, who had the only crime they had committed was that they were faithful to Jesus. But his words are not one of fix it this way or fix it that way, but rather rejoice. Just listen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. The words of Peter to these early Christians was to rejoice in their sufferings, mirroring Jesus' own words of, look at your sufferings as a blessing. Wait a minute, though. Don't we want a hero? Don't we want that person to come in and save the day? Tell me I'm wrong here. Tell me we haven't longed for someone to come and fix all the problems, maybe not just in our lives, but in the world around us. At times, the news will hold up someone who might be a hero. We always find that there might be a weakness to them. A doctor, a researcher, who finally develops that perfect medication. A politician who promises to fix all of the problems in our economy and does fix some of them. And then we find out, though, that something else in their personal life, something happened that they're, they're, that they're not so perfect after all, that they're not such a hero after all. It's kind of like if you remember Superman's weakness. Well, he may have been a great hum- hero, superhuman strength and sight and hearing and strength. He had one great weakness. It was that kryptonite, if you remember right. That green rock would make him defenseless. And I think when we look at the heroes who have entered into our world today, that they're just as defenseless when it comes down to it. That there's nothing they can really do to fix the problems of this life. Sure, they can help and make things a little better. Sure, they can improve things for a short time. But always, always, as long as we live in this sinful human world, we know that sin is going to defeat that good. It seems that way, doesn't it? It seems that even for Christians, our last resort is to come to the Lord. We often want to fix things on our own. We often want to go ahead and take things in our hands. We want to be the ones who repair it. And when we can't, Maybe we'll then turn to family or friends. But it seems like turning to God is the last resort. And why is that? Why, why is that? That we wait until the last moment to turn to God. Why is it that we wait so long? Why is it that we don't fall down on our knees in the first sign of trouble and ask the Lord for help? Ask the Lord for strength? the same sin that's been plaguing us from the beginning of time. It's that sin of pride. That sin that we can do it on our own. That sin that leads people to think that they can fix the problems in their lives. The sin that leads people to think that they have to do something to save themselves. The truth is, we're helpless. None of us amount to anything close to heroes. None of us even could even be ever consider the title superhero. But God, in the midst of our helplessness, sent to us someone greater than a superhero. Greater than we could ever know. Greater than we could ever imagine. He sent into our lives Christ Jesus, our Savior. Into our world when we did not deserve it, when we were still blinded by our sinfulness, He sent Jesus to each one of us. He sent Jesus in weakness 
to be strength for us. He sent Jesus in the foolishness of the world to provide us the wisdom of salvation, the true wisdom that leads us to life everlasting. God works in ways that are unreasonable to us. He works in ways that are counterintuitive to us. And he worked that, our salvation in the same way. In a way that we never expected by Jesus dying on the cross. By him being crucified. His death led to our life. When we look at our epistle lesson for today, we look at Paul's first letter to those people of Corinth. We're reminded of the burdens that they were bearing. The difficulties that they had. The idea that each of them was following Christ, but really was not. They had set up leaders among them, trying to do it on their own. But then you have the strength of Paul's words. The foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. The weakness of God is greater than man's strength. That is what we are reassured of. That is what we know is the promise that even though we are going through the trials and tribulations of this world, even though we long for a hero, we have one. We have a hero right here and now, and that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Because as He is all-powerful, all-knowing, He is the one who came to redeem us. He is the one who can bring us through each day, and He is the one who is there carrying us through when nothing else can. So many times in our lives, We think that we are alone. We think that we have to carry the burdens by ourselves. So many times in our lives, we think that we we have to do something. The truth is, it has all been done already for us. The truth is, that in that single act of Christ's death and His resurrection, He brought, He paid the price for all times of all places. He redeemed all people of every tribe, of every tongue. And in that redemption, He not only gave us the promise that we have a life to look forward to in heaven, but He also gave us the promise that He would be with us each day. Although it seems abnormal to us, although it seems like our first option should be to help ourselves, I challenge you to let God help you. Each and every day, rather than trying to face the day on your own, fall to your knees in prayer. Find that strength that only comes through God. Find that wisdom that only comes through Him. And we won't do it that perfectly. Sometimes we may be able to do it for a week or two weeks or three weeks or maybe even a year and a half well. But always that, that sinful pride is always pounding at our, our door waiting for us to slip up. But that's why we always need to. That is why we always need to turn to God, to turn to Christ for that forgiveness. Because no matter how many times, no matter where we are in life, that forgiveness is available to us. As His children, as the ones He loves, that forgiveness never expires. It's never too late. And I don't know if you caught it, But at the very end of 1 Corinthians today, you had a charge from Paul as well. And that charge we should hear and we should be ready to always proclaim if we are to boast. Let us boast in the Lord. If we are to boast, let us boast in the promise that we are saved. And let us not only boast among each other, but let us boast from here to the ends of the earth. Let us boast to those who do not know Jesus. Let us tell other people about the wisdom of our God, the strength of the one true God to save. Let us boast in the Lord. And let us pray. Dearest Jesus, please forgive us for those times when we try to do things on our own. When we seek heroes in our world and turn our backs on you, Forgive us. What really you? That's only you provide. But help us to know that we are your children, and there is nothing we can. Separate. Neither life nor our angels nor any all of creation separates us from you, Lord. Help us to remember that we are yours, 
And no matter how many times we need your forgiveness, that each time it's just as if it was new. That each time you wash us, that you make us whiter than, as whiter than snow, and that you prepare us to celebrate in perfection with you. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen.